Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Today we will discuss the bone uh, remodeling, growth and repair, especially after injury and fracture and its histopathology. But before going to the detail of the topic, we are looking into the picture of a bone in which you can see its well vascularity and uh, this is one of the very good reason that why bone heals very well after any fracture or injury and we know that the bone turnover rate is also very much high especially in children almost 200 times much faster than that of the adults and uh, the constant remodeling of the bone and the bone plasticity uh, you can say ability is very much helpful especially uh, if you observe that the dentist they want to adjust the teeth in the jaw bone and it can be modified by orthodontic appliances. What they do, they apply traction and pressure and the teeth are adjusted inside with the help of braces as well. And the bone is being, uh, during this procedure, is uh, in a process of remodeling. Now we are looking into another uh, diagram to show the longitudinal section in which you can see that uh, its LS is showing and uh, on its very outer side it has got the periosteum and on its inner side it is showing the endosteum layer and uh, you can see so many cells are there let me tell you what are they these are the osteoprogenitor cells which are present along these periosteum and the osteoblasts are there then you can observe the mature cells which are osteocytes and you can see the cells are endosteal which are endosteal cells present along the endosteal lining and you can see the active osteoclast and you can call them as macrophages these all take part in the procedure of the bone repair after fracture that is why we have discussed all the name of the cells and the periosteum and the endosteum now you can see a picture in which uh, the fracture of a bone is there and it has to be repaired by various developmental procedures which occurs in various stages and uh, it will be involving uh, the fibrocartilage formation and the osteogenic activity of the major bone cells which we discussed earlier in the previous picture. What happens in this very diagram that you can see here blood vessels which are torn within the fracture they release blood and what is going to happen that the clot should be there and forming a hematoma over there in this second picture uh, what is going to happen that all the debris or uh, the dead uh, matrix of the bone is gradually uh, gradually would say removed by the macrophages and replaced by a soft gelatinous like fibrocartilaginous mass of callous tissue or pro callous tissue you would say which is very much rich in collagen and fibroblast and you can see if it is broken the periosteum re-establishes the continuity over this tissue in this very picture you can observe all these changes in this uh, next uh, picture what is uh, being shown the soft fibrocartilaginous procalus is now going to be invaded by the regrowing blood vessels from the healthier tissue and the osteoblast. What is going to happen within a week? Uh, within a week or two or coming weeks, the fibrocartilaginous tissue is gradually replaced by the trabeculae of the woven bone, which is primary bone or non lamination. Uh, tissue which is being shown in the woven bone and it is supposed to form the hard callus throughout the original area of the fracture. Now in this diagram the woven bone is now remodeled as a compact and cancellous bone in continuity with the adjacent uninjured area and now it is fully functional uh, showing its uh, uh, that alignment of its vasculature which is re-established now and you know what that various stresses which are put on your bone 
during repair and uh, when patient is coming back to its uh, routine activity uh, the remodeling of the bony callus is going to take place and the immature woven bone in that uh, callus is uh, gradually resorbed and we know that being replaced by now compact and laminar bone which is showing various uh, remodeling and restoration of the original bone structure here now in this diagram i have uh, drawn a flow chart about bone repair uh, dealing with the injury or fracture what is going to happen first of all uh, you can see in the picture that there is the destruction of bone matrix that causes the death of the osteocytes then uh, next to it hemorrhage occurs or hematoma due to the damage of the blood vessels over there and what is going to happen next blood clots at the site of injury now next to it invasion occurs by the fibroblast macrophages and osteoprogenitor cells in blood capillaries they are present in the near vicinity of the connective tissue uh, like the you can mention the periosteum over there that helps to provide all these tissues over there now you can see there would be the formation of new connective tissue you call it as granulation tissue now that tissue becomes denser and some of the periosteal cell differentiate into chondroblast to form the hyaline cartilage this whole framework should surround the fracture site and now it has to form a fibro cartilaginous callus over there now look into the picture again uh, now you have to follow from below upwards uh, we were uh, talking about the fibro cartilaginous callus that was formed now the periosteal and endosteal osteoprogenitor cells they have to differentiate into osteoblast and uh, they deposit bone around callus at the periphery then after the periphery they have to uh, deposit all this bone in the center of the callus now hard bone is formed and what is going to happen next now it is going to be showing the trabecule of the primary bone that unites the broken bone fragments and now the spongy bone you would say primary or woven bone is going to be replaced by the secondary compact bone now if you observe excess bone formation is there which is now reabsorbed so that the marrow cavity continuity is restored and finally the normal surface contour of the bones are once again reestablished and this is how the bone is completely